Good evening. This is Angie. It is Tuesday, April 7th, and this is our evening COVID-19 update. We will jump right into things with a case update. This evening, we are at 14,747 cases, an increase of over 1,200 since yesterday at this time. Um, additionally, we are at 296 deaths. Um, that percentage I talk about each night, the percentage of people that are hospitalized that um, pass away. As you recall, last week, I think I first reported that statistics, it was about nine or 10%, then went up to 11%, 12%, so on. And as of today, it is at 15.6%. So of individuals that are hospitalized in the state of Florida, 15.6 of them do succumb to COVID-19. And of those individuals that do succumb to COVID-19, about 95% of that individuals are age 65 and older. Um, Osceola County currently has 256 cases, so an increase again, day over day. Um, and Orange County, again, continues to boom at 768 cases. Okay, so as I say every night, these numbers continue to demonstrate our need to be aggressive in our tactics and in our restrictions that we have in place. Um, I appreciate the residents um, being mindful and largely adhering to these restrictions. Again, another day has gone by and we've remained COVID-19 free, which is a uh, a good day by by my standards these days. A healthy community is is uh, the most important thing um, at this point. Okay, so let's just jump into a few happenings around the community today. Won't be as long as of an update as last night, but that's how Monday seemed to go. Um, just a note to everybody that we are using this opportunity to do some work around the community. We are right on the cusp of our two year anniversary, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the update, uh, but just shy of our, our two year anniversary. And so we are, are putting a little bit of time and energy into some of the common spaces of the community. Today, we were working on stripping um, and deep cleaning the tile on the ground level of the community. So pardon us, I know that one of the elevators was out of order for a bit of time. That's because we wanted to make sure that residents could safely travel uh, to the exterior areas of the community without being in that, that wet floor area. Um, so we will try to, if that happens again, though, let everybody know the night of, in advance that that's going to be happening. But nonetheless, um, we've been working on that and already seeing a big difference in the floor. We're also going to be working on some high, high dusting of areas um, where we need to get some equipment in there that would usually be a little bit more um, uh, in the way, more disruptive. I know that we clean the veranda carpeting. We'll be doing some of the other of the, the larger common area carpeting, doing a lot of paint uh, paint touch-ups, etc. cetera. Um, so hopefully by the time all of this is, look, is done, we're looking like a fresh new community. Um, and I'm sure we'll be coming, we'll all be coming out of this with a fresh set of eyes and a different perspective. So I'm sure we'll never be so happy to see um, the, the uh, uh, the Windsor Celebration Common and Community Areas. So I have to say, I don't like seeing them vacant. I can remember two years ago now, right about this time, thinking to myself as I was walking to my office saying, oh my gosh, it's crazy to think this community is never gonna be like this again. It's never gonna be empty. Um, so it's every day I have that thought and I look around and think, oh, you know, I never thought I'd see this and um, it's, it's difficult. It's not how wins are supposed to look, but again, it's worth the sacrifice if after the end of all this, we are all collectively able to come back together and enjoy life at Windsor. So anyway, um, switching gears, we are going to talk trash again. This trash thing continues to be a bit of an issue. Um, today, even Linda was assisting a resident and the resident was attempting to put to empty a trash bag into the trash chute and keep the bag. Hmm. Hmm. 
I don't have many words for that. I'm, I'm speechless a little bit. So we just cleaned and scrubbed these trash rooms and what a icky job that, you know, the environmental services team got in there and did and had it smelling fresh and wonderful. And it's like 24 hours later and it's super stinky and gross again because people are doing this. They're emptying trash bags into the trash chute and reusing the trash bags. Not putting in a putting in a good word for Windsor's grocery program, but we do have a grocery program right now. And you can get 50 10 gallon trash bags for $3.50. Maybe a good deal, maybe not a good deal, whatever way you think about it. You can get them, you can use them, 50 of them for $3.50. At this point, I'm getting to, and I hate to have to do this, especially in this type of environment we're in, but we really need everybody to be a good neighbor. Nobody wants to be near a trash room that's stinky and gross. Even though it's a trash room, it should be clean, it should be odor free. But if we continue to have residents throwing trash directly in the trash chute, I'm gonna have to put on my investigative hat um, and figure out who's doing it. And we're gonna have to hold those people responsible for cleaning the trash room. And beyond that, what happens is the trash chute is literally a metal chute, it's a metal, um, you know, shoot, <laughs> that goes down to the foot. And what happens is when people throw trash in there, it gets caught in different parts um, of the trash chute and then it will decay within the chute itself. And you have to have a professional company come out and clean the chutes, right? And I know you, you guys pay good money in monthly service fees and I wanna be using those monthly service fees to have amazing surf and turf dinners and concerts and wonderful experiences. I don't wanna be using it to pay a professional company to clean the trash chute. I'd rather us be using trash bags and keeping the trash rooms fresh and clean. So it's not a, I don't wanna say a no, an eyesore, a nose sore, to, to the community. So please be mindful. If you need trash bags, call the front desk. We can bring some up and go right on your monthly, monthly bill, $3.50 for 50 bags. Please do not use, reuse your trash bags, okay? All right, let's see. Groceries, I just wanna talk a little bit about the grocery program. I have used the Windsor grocery program and then a couple of times I myself has, have ordered Instacart or, or um, I've used Instacart or shipped. Um, so like today I was looking on there and I was curious about eggs as an example. Because I was looking under shopping lists and the six eggs seem a little bit expensive. So I was kind of looking over some things. But, so we're gonna look at that. But besides that, what I did notice is there's still a lot of stuff that's out of stock. Um, I think there were six different variety of eggs that Target usually carries and only one um, variety was in stock. So sometimes things are in stock or there's an order limit or things are only in stock early in the morning. I found that with milk. I found that with some breads. I found that with eggs. So just be mindful too that it certainly um, is a nice, easy service to be able to use that grocery program. I saw Angie running around this evening as we came down to our guest apartments and she was delivering meals. So please don't forget about that program. It is very convenient. Um, no interaction in terms of deliveries, et cetera, for the staff or you as well. So a great opportunity to um, enjoy a really convenient service that is safe um, to residents. And again, we continue to add items. I know this week we were adding toothpaste, kind of like root beer got added, orange soda, just a bunch of different things. So if you have a suggestion, let us know. We're not 100% sure we can get it on. We're not gonna be able to get everything on, that's for sure. But we have added things in our listening and hearing. You know, the peanut butter was one thing I heard. It's a big 40 ounce thing of peanut butter. That to me is like, it's my fantasy is a 40 ounce jar of peanut butter in a spoon. Like that's, I'd like to be quarantined with that jar of peanut butter. But unfortunately that's not my situation. 
Anyway, so I am going to see that is a big container. going to see if we can't get the individual serving containers. I'm not sure if we can or can't and maybe change that a little bit. So we're looking at things and it will evolve over time, the grocery program. But keys, please still keep giving us feedback. It's very helpful. Um, and again, we want it to be a service that works for you, but we also want to make sure it's not something that gets too big and that gets too watered down. And we've got so many things because again, we're buying the groceries with the community money, right? And then selling it. And we wanna make sure that we don't end up with a bunch of stuff that we're not gonna use, right? So we have to be mindful about being good stewards of your money, of the community's money, um, and not purchasing things that aren't gonna be, aren't able to be resold, et cetera, okay? So, you know, I've got like three different requests for specific brands of toothpaste. We won't be that specific. We'll get one toothpaste and, Again, everybody for the next, you know, six, 30, 60 days will, that needs toothpaste will just have to power through that toothpaste brand. Um, okay, so that's enough, I guess, housekeeping items. Um, just to cherry or to go on what we talked about last night, I am now, because we have had some com complaints, concerns about the food, um, and some residents I've talked to have said, well, you get different food than us. Well, I don't, I promise. I pinky promise I do not get different food. We go in um, after the food has already left the kitchen to be distributed to residents and we kind of get the, the, le the leftovers. It's not leftover, it's fresh food, but it's what hasn't gone out, right? So um, we are literally getting the same, we're having the same meals as you are. And so I'm making a point of order of, of having them give me just a little sampling of each menu item so that I can experience it myself. Um, you know, so tonight I had some of the chili mac, I had polenta, oh, I had pork loin, and I had zucchini and squash. Um, and I thought everything was pretty good. I'm not a big fan of polenta, I found out though. I, I don't know if it was the polenta's fault or my fault. I don't know. They used to fry polenta sticks here and I like those, but I would, you could probably fry a shoe when I'd be on board. So I'm not sure I'm a polenta fan, but I thought everything else was really good this evening. And then of course at lunch, we had um, the shrimp lo mein and we had also the London broil, I believe. And I thought the lumber, London broil was very tasty with the potatoes. Um, so anyway, I'm trying to taste everything, not just what my preference is that evening. So again, if residents are having concerns, I have had that same meal and can kind of, um, I have a frame of reference to go back to when we're talking about those things. So I just wanted to let everybody know that. Um, we wanna be really open. I don't want anybody to think that we're not being open and we don't wanna hear feedback because we do. And hopefully that will allow me to have some better dialogue with both you as residents or families, as well as the staff. So, but I thought dinner was pretty good tonight. You know, considering we're in a pandemic, pretty good, pretty good. I mean, Chili Mac, I might have to figure out how to make that. I think I, I've got some, some people at home that would be fans of that. All right, so a little bit of fun. We were sitting there today and a month ago, before all this happened, we were in the midst of planning an amazing second anniversary party. And it was a party that was gonna be through the decades. So we were so excited. And those of you that were with us last year on our first anniversary, we did a, um, a cruise ship all over the world and had different themes in different places. And it was such an amazing event. One of those events I'll, I'll always remember. Um, and this year we were so excited to do it again. And then all of a sudden, March 12th, 13th rolled around. And I think by March 17th, we'd made the decision to cancel the anniversary event because of everything that was going on. So today, as we sat around, we started talking about the anniversary and kind of said, oh my goodness, it's next week. So our second anniversary is actually April 16th. That is the day the very handsome Don Miller and the lovely Edith Voss joined us as our, as I always joke, our King and Queen of Windsor on April 16th, 2018. So we decided in the spirit of finding things to celebrate, we are going to celebrate Windsor's second anniversary all next week. So we have challenged each department to come up with a way 
to celebrate anniversary week with each and every one of you one day next week. So every day next week, starting on Monday, um, we are going to bring the celebration to your front door. So it'll be, um, gosh, hold on. I took it on my very fancy notes here, my napkin, my napkin notepad tonight. Um, let's see. And I haven't told food and beverage this, so don't tell them until I break it to them tomorrow. They missed the meeting. We could have been really cruel and put them on Monday though, but we didn't. Um, so on Monday, you're going to see CC and the life enrichment team, and they're going to bring a surprise celebration to your front door. On Tuesday, food and beverage um, will bring a celebration to your door, and they've brought many already, as have life enrichment. So they're going to lead the way for the rest of us. On Wednesday, we're going to do the administrative staff, and that's kind of a collection of marketing, the business office, the concierge, and myself. Um, and of course, Linda is going to join the life enrichment team. So wellness will be with life enrichment. And then Thursday, the nursing team, as well as Ali and David are going to bring the party to you. And then on Friday, we will have Glenn, Marcy and the plant and environmental services teams along with the valet and drivers will be bringing the party to you. So we are going to find a way to celebrate every single day next week this wonderful place that is Windsor and you amazing residents that make this community just a remarkable place to live and a cherished place to work for all of us who who get to serve you. So I am very much looking forward to that. I'm thinking hard about um, what suggestions I might have for my team and how we might create lots of smiles and lots of memories. So hey, in 2021, we can all look back and say, oh my gosh, remember last year how tough it was, but wow, we had we had a good week. Okay, so we're looking forward to that and we hope you are too. Um, we do have uh, Passover, we have Good Friday, and we have Easter coming up this weekend. So we certainly have a lot to be thankful for. Um, and we look forward to um, sharing those days with you, even if you, we are not together, we are, we are certainly not far apart. So I think we'll end there, but I'm really excited about next week. I hope we're going to have uh, some smiles, some laughs, and some good times together. And I'm sure it'll involve some food because it wouldn't be Windsor if it didn't. Um, but I think that's about it. I hope you have a wonderful night. Same time, same place tomorrow. Be well, get a good night's sleep, and we will see you then.